Hi everyone, welcome to Peoples Online. Our goal is to encourage and inspire you on your walk with God. Come and join us on Sunday mornings at 9.30 and 11.15. Stay tuned for the whole video and we'll be able to give you ways to connect with us. Enjoy today's message. I want to just continue that today, just uh, follow up to things that we were talking about last week. If you missed last week, it's going to be okay. I know this will stand on its own today, but it is a bit of a follow up. And last week I was talking about this, uh, just this idea about who are you when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and so today I just sort of want to unpack that a little bit more and, and maybe describe a little bit about what that looks like and what it should look like. And, and uh, so I want you to just to take this journey with me. And I'm going to just kick us off with a couple scriptures just to sort of get our curiosity going and and just this idea to just get it flowing with us and so um i just want to hit this first one it's from first timothy and of course you'll just hear paul is like writing this to timothy and and he says this and he says do not neglect your gift and and basically if you read it there's sort of depending which translation there's some extra words in there but the gift that is in you do not neglect your gift, or do not neglect the gift that is in you. And I, I want to read to you again, in 2 Timothy, same thing, Paul's talking to Timothy, and he's saying, for this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you. Fan into flame the gift that is within you. Now, I realize that, you know, many of us can be here today and go, I don't even know if there, is there a gift in me? I don't feel very you know, gifted or, or that I've maybe even sensed, has God ever operated in my life that way, some supernatural gifting through me? And so it's all right. We're in good company because we're all learning. We're all growing. And today we're going to just continue to talk about this idea. But I want to just sort of present this idea to you, though, that you need to realize, because I don't think this was just written for Timothy. This was written for the church so that we don't understand how the giftings work and that everybody God has giftings that he wants to be operating by his spirit in you. He has, you know, different ones. The body's different, and so it functions differently. And we as individuals, yes, we're going to have different giftings. And, and, you know, God tailors these things for who we are. But I want to just say to you, God has gifted you, and he, he wants to, by his spirit, operate through you and in your life. And he's telling us, don't neglect the gift, and also fan into flame. Now, it's a little bit of a joke in our family. We love camping and all that type of stuff. And I have, you know, made many fires. And I have done some not so well. And I've done some better, okay? Now, my wife remembers all the ones I haven't done well. That's sort of true, okay? And, you know, so she thinks I'm a bit of an amateur fire maker. I like to think that I'm a bit of a professional. But, you know, anybody that's married, you understand what I'm talking about. There's, there's differences, okay? But I, something that I do know and what I love is that sometimes you can have a campfire and it almost looks like it's going out. But, you know, I usually take a piece of cardboard and I'll walk over and I just start to fan it. And it's like air comes to the fire and all of a sudden this thing that almost looked dormant and was almost out can all of a sudden, it's like it combusts and it comes back to life, right? You fan into flames. So you can sort of see it, right, in your mind, if you've ever done this, right? And, and so this imagery is here in Scripture, and I want us to think about that in regards to us. God has put things in us, and you know, maybe for some of us, it's like the fire's just burning lightly right now, but God's saying you need to fan it into a flame. You got to position yourself that way. And you know, that's why it's like it's important for us to come to church. It's important for us to come together and to worship God. It's important to put ourselves around people that encourage us and, and you know, fan into flame what God has put in us. You want to be around people that are speaking into that, that are encouraging you in these areas. You want to position yourself there so that this, does, this fire that's in us doesn't go out because it's assumed. That's what I hear. Paul's like saying, it's like this assumed idea that there is a fire burning in you, but you need to fan it into a flame. It needs to just move from something small and be, you know, set ablaze in us. And so when we think of the spiritual gifts and we think of the Spirit of God operating in us, it's something that we should be intentionally 
fanning it into a flame, not neglecting it, okay? And there's a couple other scriptures that just sort of set the stage a little bit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it tells us this. It says, eagerly desire the greater gifts. Eagerly desire. Now, depending where you read it, there, it's mentioned probably three or four times, almost this exact same statement. It says, you know, eagerly desire the higher gifts. Um, if you read it in chapter 14, it says, you know, follow the way of love and then eagerly desire the greater gifts. It's tied together. Now, I just want to just highlight something just before I move on. You know, everybody loves in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Does everyone know what 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is? What, what is it? The love chapter, right? Okay, when you look in scripture though, just maybe you've never ever realized this. If you look at 1 Corinthians 12, Okay, there's this whole, it lists the gifts, and, and it basically is just talking about us understanding spiritual gifts, okay? Chapter 13 continues, because actually chapter 13 starts, it's, it's, it's not by coincidence, it just says, you know, if I speak with other tongues and have not love, you see, it's right in the vein of what's happening, okay? In chapter 12, it goes into chapter 13, and then it continues even into chapter 14, and when it's saying again, you know, eagerly desire the greater gifts, and you sort of see this picture unfolding about, you know, the gifts of the Spirit. They're listed, but especially it talks about even love, and I just want to just say something before I move on. When you hear, you know, when you read that, you know, love is patient, love is kind, it does not boast, it does not envy, it is not proud, not self-seeking, you know, it favors others, it doesn't keep a record of wrong. And you're, you're hearing all of this amazing stuff about love, but I want to tell you that type of love is carried by the Spirit of God. Okay? This is why this is sort of in the middle of all of that. That type of love is experienced, because let's be honest, Love that forgets and keeps no record of wrong is not a natural type of thing. Have you just sort of naturally, hey, I just forget everything bad everyone's ever done in my life. How many marriages? You're just like, you know, I've just forgotten everything wrong they did. Ominous silence has filled the room. Okay? But by the Spirit of God, we can overlook things. We can let stuff go. Okay, we can live in a way, we can think in a way that's radically different than what would come naturally to us. Why? Because we're carried by the Spirit of God. Okay, it's not a coincidence. And you know what? Sometimes we haven't even thought, okay, because I'm going to talk about a lot of different manifestations of gifts that are in Scripture, but sometimes we've forgotten that love is a supernatural spiritual gift. Okay? And you know what, you might be like, oh, you know what, I really need that. Because some of us don't come by that naturally, right? It's hard to love people. It's hard to care about people. We see, you know, people are flawed and all that type of stuff. And it's hard to carry ourselves that way. But we can by the Spirit of God. It's tied right in there. And it's not by coincidence, okay? So we're going to move on to some other things. But it just, it just was something this week as I was preparing. I was just like, oh my goodness, I hadn't really noticed this in Scripture. How this love chapter's right in the middle, okay? And it's talking about all of these supernatural things, you know, about how we see dimly, but then we're going to see face to face, and there's all this supernatural stuff that's sort of flowing and operating in those chapters of, of, of God's Word. So, I want to keep going, though. Now, in God's Word, there's just a number of lists of what spiritual gifts are. So, if you read in, in Romans chapter 12, you'll hear that, you know, gifts of the Spirit are like um, exhorting one another, giving leadership, mercy, prophecy, service, teaching. If you read in 1 Corinthians, you read about administration, uh, people being apostles, discernment, faith, uh, healing, helps, knowledge, miracles, prophecy, teaching tongues, interpretation of tongues, wisdom, hospitality. And then in Ephesians chapter 4, it talks about uh, just the, sort of the five-fold ministry, that there's going to be apostles, there's going to be evangelists, pastors, prophets, teachers. Now, there also are some giftings that are described in Scripture that aren't quite as po popular. Sometimes we don't think of being a missionary as a gifting, okay? But it is. It's one of those things. And I think that sometimes, it's sort of like, you know, the whole thing about, about being a missionary is like, we're like, we don't know if we really, like, God could call me to some place I don't want to live, like Canada, or 
northern Canada? I don't know. Okay, okay. God could call me someplace. I'd be scared. Dear knows where God would send me. But you realize that, you know, even being a missionary is a calling and a gifting that God gives. Some other ones that aren't probably as popular, okay, like you probably haven't thought about how voluntary poverty is a gifting that's described in Scripture. Okay, now some, some of us are probably hearing like going, I have that gift, whether I like it or not. Like, I operate in voluntary poverty all the time, right? No, but, okay, honestly, it's in Scripture. It's described, okay, martyrdom, okay? There's an one It's like, Lord, just give me martyrdom. All I want is martyrdom, right? Not usually ones we, Lord, give me celibacy. That, like, I've just been, it was really quiet in the first service when I talked about this as well, okay? Okay? <laughs> But honestly, these things are described, okay? Some of these are not the popular gifts we just run after. We just want those ones, okay? But there are many gifts that are described in God's word, okay? And I'm just trying to just remind us of these things. And things happen when we are people that function and operate by the Spirit of God. One of the greatest examples, okay, when we just sort of just get a snapshot this is actually, I'm going to read a passage to you from Isaiah when it's talking about Jesus. And these are actually future sort of thoughts and ideas, okay? This is like a prophetic word, but this was talking about Jesus. So in his Isaiah chapter 11, and it says that there's this coming one, okay? And it says that the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. And the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and of strength or of might, the spirit of the knowledge of the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. Now, this is a very, when honestly, if you look up, just, just a little piece of trivia for you, um, when you hear almost from a Catholic church perspective, when they talk about the spiritual gifts, they focus on this. They talk about these seven gifts that are mentioned about Jesus, okay? Now, just, just a little piece of trivia, okay? But something that I just want you to just grab hold of when the Spirit of God is upon someone, okay, things come with that, okay? What comes with it? A spirit of wisdom comes with the operation of God's Spirit in you. All of us need that, a spirit of understanding, okay? Um, the ability to use wisdom, okay? Because sometimes you can have knowledge and not know how to use it, okay? This is why we don't just have wisdom, we also have understanding, okay? Like, I can hand you a book of wisdom about doing how to change an engine in a vehicle, but without understanding, you're not, like, it's hard to use that, right? You, you sort of get the picture, okay? So, God's describing, though, when God's spirit was resting upon Jesus, this is what it looked like. Spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, spirit of might, okay? Spirit of knowledge, fear of the Lord, and even he will delight, you know, even Gloria was talking about this, that, you know, that we're going to be passionate about the Lord, that we're going to be filled with the Spirit of God, that we're going to delight in Him. I, I just want to just say to you, you know, I, I know because I've gone through seasons of my life, you know, where either I was away from the Lord or even where maybe I've gotten indifferent. And it's hard to delight myself in the Lord when I'm not open to the working of God's Spirit in me. It's like I'm not interested. It doesn't even make sense to me. And, and often I think we, we see that when, you know, even people that are not of faith and they're just like, why would you go to, well, first of all, why would you go to church and give good time? Why would you go to the church and give them money? Why would you go to the church and sing songs to God? Why would you raise your hands? Why would you do, like, why would you sort of delight yourself in those things? Well, I just wanted to say because we delight ourselves in those things because they're led by the Spirit of God. And if you don't function and operate by the Spirit of God, those things are going to seem totally foreign and ridiculous. But by the Spirit of God, they totally, you know, we delight ourselves in knowing the Lord. We delight ourselves in His ways, right? We delight ourselves in the fear of the Lord. Why? Because this is something that is produced in us by the Spirit of God. Now, I want to read to you another, because... In Isaiah, this also refers to Jesus, and I'm going to transition this. You'll understand where I'm going, okay? But in Luke, it talks about the same idea that's represented in Isaiah, and it's, and it's Jesus shows up, and he's reading. He rolls out the, the scroll, and he begins to read. Actually, the religious leaders are there. There's a bunch of people there, and he just says, the Spirit of the Lord is on me, and because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. 
He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. You know, it's no coincidence when we look, when the Spirit, when the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, okay, was upon, you hear Jesus' words, he's saying, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, right? And it looks like this. I begin to proclaim the good news to the poor. I go, okay, he has sent us to proclaim freedom for prisoners, recovery of sight, you know, the miracles, the miraculous, the oppressed are set free, and to proclaim that God is not against us, but to declare the favor of God, okay? Something happens. You see, this resonates with us. Why? Because when you are a person of the Spirit of God, this didn't just stay with Jesus. This actually gets transferred to us. This is why Jesus said, it is better for me to go so that the Holy Spirit will come and that the Holy Spirit will be poured out on everyone that desires, to, upon everyone that would receive the gift of the Spirit of God. And it is going to look like something when it comes upon you. Because I see this. I, I've seen this with people. that I've seen it in my own home. I've seen it with my own dad. I've seen it, you know, I've seen it with people of God. Not just ministers. People of God. The church. The kingdom of God. This is why. If you wonder why we have gone all around the world telling people about Jesus. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. It's why we go to the poor it's why we proclaim it's why we speak out it's why we you know we give our resources it's why we spend money you know on vbs it's why we run a sports league it's why you know it's why we do all these different things why because the spirit of the lord is upon us and he has sent us to go we're not just supposed to stay here and sometimes we forget that this is actually this is the operating of the spirit of god it's why these things resonate with us that's why it's like, we, sometimes we don't even have to be told. It's just like, of course. Of course. Well, why? Because the Spirit of God. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, you're going to realize God has sent me out with a message. I cannot help. I am meant to be part of the light of the world. You know, it moved, right? Jesus is the light of the world. But then he said, no. But I say to you, you are the light of the world. Right, And this thing can't be hidden. It has to go out. It, it has to shine. It has to be spoken of. And, you know, and through that, there's things that we do. We do proclaim freedom. We speak release. We speak healing. We can't do that by our own strength. I, I literally today, I've prayed for three or four people for healing in this place. I, don't, I have no ability to heal anybody at all. I'm not a doctor. I'm not trained. If anything, physically, I could probably only make things worse, okay? But by the Spirit of God, right? But by the Spirit of God, we can declare and say, no, but we know that God is our healer. And by the Spirit of God, we can declare that and say, you know what? The devil would like to steal, kill, and destroy, but no, Jesus has come that you may have life, and we can declare it. So those that are oppressed, those that are broken, those that are sick, whatever, blind, whatever it may be, we can say healing, life, hope in the name of Jesus. We do these things, these bold proclamations by the Spirit of God. So it is important that we realize, because sometimes... I'm trying to point out some things because sometimes I think we don't realize what is the Spirit of God operating in us. And then also us taking and realizing, hey, God's already started something in me and I need to like let it escalate in my life. I need to fan into flame this thing so that it's going to just, you know, begin to take on new life. Okay? And I'm going to be engaged in it in a different way. Now, there's a number of things that... Uh, I just, I want to, uh, I want to share, but before I move to that, um, when I think about the giftings of God, and if I could just share something like personal with you, you know, I hear, I hear Paul saying these things, and there's a lot of teaching that Paul does in the New Testament about the spiritual gifts, and 
we get a lot of our theology and our doctrine because of the things that Paul is saying. And just like even when you read, like, eagerly desire the greater gifts. And I realized, I was thinking about this and even thinking about when Paul says that too. He's like, don't neglect the gift that's in you. And I was questioning myself this week and I was just like, I was like, you know, I could preach all of this. Sorry, this is, I'm a little tangled up. But never mind. Um, I could preach all of this to myself because I was, just, I was just thinking, I was like, how does this apply? And, and I got realizing that there's a number of things, just, and I, I'm sure that this list can be long, but I think that sometimes we quench what God wants to do by his spirit in us, or we neglect, or we forget, and there's some reasons. I think sometimes it's fear. We're like, well, what will happen, like, what if I get fanatical, okay? M- many times we have fear. Maybe we've seen something abused in the spirit. Or, or we've seen something I guess we would call fleshly. You know, we've seen someone, they get out of hand, fleshly, whatever. And we're like, whoa, 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 that's too weird for me. Don't want that, right? Don't want that. And so we close ourselves off. You know, it's sort of like we throw, you know, the baby out with the bathwater, because we've seen some, maybe some wildfire, so now we don't want any fire at all, right? Because that's safer somehow. Or we're, but I, I just want to just mention this in that, and maybe draw your attention that we want to be careful that fear is not the root. Like we saw someone act crazy, so now we're afraid of it. Because we just think, no, it's actually, I'm just being discerning and spiritual right? But I actually think that there might be more of that is fear-based. Things can get out of hand, and I'm like, oh, hey, we don't operate by fear, okay? And our lane is not craziness. I, that's not who we are as a church, and that's not who we're going to be, but we want to be people that are open to the moving of God, and we don't want to be afraid and quench what God wants to do by his spirit. That's one thing, okay? The other thing that I think I look at my own life and I realize I get comfortable. I just sort of like, you know, we used to be a smaller church. There used to be less people. We used to struggle a lot more, right? And we we couldn't help it. We were in a way, we were just plain uncomfortable because you're just trying to, you know, you've just felt you needed to get somewhere else. And but sometimes, you know, you get a little momentum behind you. And this isn't just the church. This can be just you personally. Because you know what? I've noticed something. When people are broke, they get really spiritual. It was like, dear Lord, get me out. Come on. I, it's like we get all prosperity all of a sudden, right? You know what I mean? No. Take back what the devil has stolen. And, you know, we just we get fired up, right? No, same thing. When we get in a predicament, like, you know what? I've seen, you know we get in a a relational predicament and all of a sudden we get really spiritual, okay? Okay, I'm just mentioning some of this because then when things are good, we get comfortable. When things are difficult, we get really spiritual, but then when they get good, we get comfortable. And I just, I, I was just mentioning this because I was just like, I'm like going, you know what? I think I've gotten a little bit comfortable. You know, we're, we've gotten good at stuff, and we get, we've seen some success, and we've experienced some good stuff, but we've gotten comfortable. And I was like, I've gotten comfortable. But this, why I feel that this is precarious and why it's important to mention is that I have found God talks to me more when I'm uncomfortable, Okay, and even though it's interesting that even for many of us in our spiritual walk with God, it's like we're trying to get to some beautiful utopia where things go great. You know, that's my whole spiritual life is trying to get to some, and I'm like going, actually, maybe, maybe our spiritual life is supposed to be filled with a bit of these awkward, uncomfortable things where God can meet us there. And he can show up because we're seeking and we're looking. And we're like, man, if God doesn't show up, I don't know what I'm going to do. 
If God doesn't show up, I don't have strength for this battle. If God doesn't show up, we don't have money for that bill. If God doesn't show up, we don't have an answer for that sickness. If God doesn't show up, if the Spirit of God doesn't give us a word, it doesn't give us vision, or doesn't give us hope, I don't know what we're going to do. There's something absolutely, actually powerful about when we're not comfortable. And so I just want to challenge us before I say anything else because I just think this is important for us to think about have maybe you sort of gotten comfortable in your walk with God and you know what whether you really go it's like the spirit of God actively saying something to me on a regular basis how long has it been since God sort of just dropped something some drop of grace into your heart or into your thinking or into your spirit how long has it been maybe it has been too long that you know you just haven't had a fresh revelation from God about you about your life about where you're supposed to be going about you know how you're supposed to be functioning as a follower of Christ how you're supposed to be living this out and I want to challenge us that we are going to be people that you know push against being comfortable because it's easy just to settle in we get comfortable and And something about that is that we just sort of, so, you know, we can fear things, we get comfortable, and we end up staying where it's safe. And I just think, when I look at Scripture, I don't think the disciples stayed where it was safe. I don't think Paul stayed where it was safe. That's why we love reading about all of these things. But they were carried by the Spirit of God. God told them to go places. God told them to do things. God, you know, empowered them to do it, you know? He commissioned us, and it wasn't just them. It's us. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel. Go into every tribe, every nation, right? And he's saying, and I will be with you always. Well, how is that going to happen? He's going to be with us always by his spirit. He's going to be equipped. And and he also says, and these signs and wonders are going to accompany those that believe. You know what, supernatural things, spiritual giftings and encounters and all of these things should accompany those of us that believe. So, it is just of the greatest importance that you realize this today. I was reading this quote this week and it sort of surprised me. I was just reading lots of different things about spiritual giftings and and sometimes when I'm working on something, I'll actually go and read people that, you know, from other you know, denominations and whatnot. And so I was reading this quote, and this quote was from John Piper. And, and I just loved how he just sort of captured this idea. He says, if you look up every text in Acts where the Holy Spirit works in believers, it is never subconscious. In Acts, the Holy Spirit is not a silent influence, but an experienced power just want you to hear that. The Holy Spirit is not a silent influence, but an experienced power. That just so grabbed me. I was like, because sometimes we've just like, no, you know, yeah, I accept Christ and, you know, deposit of the Holy Spirit in me. And yeah, he's just, he's sort of just a silent voice. And I get that the Holy Spirit is going to, because the Holy Spirit is our guide, it's our teacher, illuminates God's word, um, uh, will convict us of sin. So yes, is there gonna be times when the Holy Spirit speaks to us and it's a still small voice? Yes, absolutely. But when we look also in scripture, we see that the outpouring of God's spirit was actually the power of God, an experienced power of God happening, operating, flowing through our life. And so I want to encourage us today as followers of Christ that we need to be experiencing this. It's not just something in our mind, but actually that there's going to be expression, experiencing God's power. So I'm going to tie up a couple thoughts here and we're going to take a couple minutes to worship God and sort of just take this to respond. But there's three simple things that I want just you to understand about the, you know, the operating of God's spirit. And really, this first one is, I built this whole thing that I'm teaching you today out of this. This so struck me. I have never talked about this. I I just read it earlier. And uh, it's from Romans chapter 1, verse 11. 
And this is Paul. He's talking to the church in Rome, and this is what he says. He says, I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift. And you see the underlying part. I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift. And hear what, and he says, to make you strong. I long to see you. I long to impart some spiritual gift to you. And there's going to be a result to that. When that gift shows up in your life, you will be strong. Okay? And then it goes on. And that is that you and I will be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. When the gifts of God's Spirit are operating in the church, things happen. So when we stand, you know what? I'm believing, even as an example of what this scripture says, that today, as we talk of these things, that there are those among us that are going to be made strong by the Spirit of God. Okay? That is why we're doing, that's why we get up in this spot and we teach and we declare the Word of God and we declare the Spirit of God. Why? So that we will be strong. Who here would like to be strong by the Spirit of God? Come on. It's all right. Put it, you know, let, let's, be, let's be like, I need that. I want that, right? And, and even, and so that we also will be mutually encouraged. We need to, like, The gifts of God's Spirit are meant to be something that's experienced, not just personally, but together. And that we see that God is working in us, and we hear, and you know, we do. We're like, like, isn't that just Tony? Or isn't that just so-and-so? Isn't that just so? Look at them go by the Spirit of God. We're encouraged. We're mutually built up rather than mutually discouraged. Because sometimes, hey, times are tough. And it gets easy, you can get, you know, navel gazing, and you're just like, oh, it's really bad, it's really tough, it's, we're just losing on every front, remember when that didn't work out? And, you know, you can get mutually discouraged, but you know what, by the Spirit of God, we can come, we can be strong, and we can be mutually encouraged. Okay, that's one thing. The next thing, I'm going to just read to you from, from 1 Peter chapter 4, I'm just trying to move quickly. It says, each, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve God others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms the purpose of a gift when God you know operates through you if God gives you a word of knowledge or God gives you a word of wisdom or God faith rises up in your or you know generosity or a gift of administration whatever it might be if that wells up inside of you it's not so hey God's given me a gift of business let's get loaded right? No. It's like God has given you that ability to serve others. You know, if God has given you, you know, like an obvious one I hope would be hospitality. If God's given you a gift of hospitality, serve people, right? If God's given you a gift to teach, serve people with it. If God's given you a word, it's not like, hey. You see, it's interesting for us, I think it's just human nature, is that we get this turned upside down. When we see someone highly gifted, it's like we all got to run and see them. And it's almost like we serve them. But if someone is operating by the Spirit of God, they are there to serve the body, to serve the church. It's not the other way around, okay? It's not that way. It is meant any gift that God gives, we, and this is important for us to keep you know, just sort of in order in our life is that we are to serve one another. The church needs to be served by spiritual gifts. It's how the church is meant to function. It's how the church is meant to work. Is that we would be serving each other with the giftings that God would bestow. Some of us are the hands, some of us are the feet, some of the eyes, the heart, the eyes, or the ears, you know, all these different things. God wants to serve the body through us. So it is of the greatest importance because you think if I'm not operating and serving in my gift, then there's a part of the body that's not receiving blessing or or God has to go raise someone else up. God wants to use each one of us to serve the body. Not And you know what? I don't have any time to (laughs) hang out on this. And it's not just here. It's outside of these walls. 
we aren't just supposed to just serve each other. We are to get out into our community and serve people and care about people and be engaged by the Spirit of God. I, I'm looking forward. I want to hear stories about you know, prophetic words or words of knowledge in the workplace or God, someone getting healed in the workplace or just something, a, a miraculous turnaround in a company because people prayed. You know, like that type of stuff. It's not, you know, our giftings aren't just meant just so that we can just get in a holy huddle and we can all hang out and yell prophetic words at each other. Most of the time, we're not the ones that need it. We have a world that needs prophetic voices. We need a world that needs people that are going to love them and care about them and, and just be engaged and serve. And so it's a spiritual gift. And, when, you know, we need more of it. And so the spiritual gifts do these things. They make us strong. We become mutually encouraged, okay? Spiritual gifts, we serve each other, and they're for a reason, okay? It says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and I'm going to start reading at verse 4. It says, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given, and I want you to hear, for the common good. The common good. I'll read it in some other translations, and it says, for the profit of all. That everybody would be benefited. That everyone would gain. That the common good would go up a level when the Spirit of God comes. You see, Sometimes, I've been, I've been going to church for a long time. I, Liz, do you want to you come back? Or, I've been going to church for a long time, and one of the things that I, you know, and I've been Pentecostal since birth. I, I was born in a Pentecostal church. Okay. But one of the things that I've observed, okay, I'm just meddle just a little bit, is that sometimes we have been more willing. We love to come to church, and we're just like, you know, and I'm not, it looks like I'm mocking. I shouldn't, maybe I should, but we, we want an experience of the Holy Spirit. I want my, you know, the hair on my neck to stand up, and I want to prophesy, and I want to experience all of these things. <laughs> that is only part of the picture. And, it, and I don't even know if it's a big part. Because where I think at times where we've lost steam was, we did all of this stuff, and we experienced all of these things, but it never got out of here. It didn't get out of here. I can be bold. I can be bold by the Spirit of God amongst my, you know, you know like, but it never got beyond here. And I'm not talking, to, I, and I'm not just talking, going, yelling words at people. I'm talking about really getting down and like, what about if you really started to pray for a word from God for your coworker? And I mean a real God word. Like something where, like, you know, God showed up and really just said something. And it's accurate. Like it's just 110%. It's 120% right on. What if we got that type of hungry? And instead of just experiencing these things, because we get, we just, we got enjoying it so much, experiencing it for ourselves. And it is good. I love, I love experiencing the presence of God. I'm not against that in the least. But if it doesn't translate into my life, and if it doesn't translate into my other conversations, if it doesn't translate in, you know, into just all the areas of my life, it doesn't, if it doesn't translate to even my finances, you know, like, I think I've got some things out of balance. If I just want an experience, it needs to go beyond that. And, and, and I'll be the first one, I love, the charismatic church. I love the spirit-filled church. I've, you know, I'm in it. I love it. I get it. Okay? But I do think there's areas that we can do better. Okay? And that we can, and it's going to stretch us because it's scary. Because some, for some of us, our spirit experience has gotten comfortable. We're in here. Okay? We're, we're just sort of in here and it's, we're not just meant to be in here. This is just like, a stopping point 
where you know we recharge and we refuel and we get ourselves realigned and we we pick the lane that we're going to take and you know that's what it is this isn't the whole picture this is just part of the picture a, a hugely necessary part i get that but it says because you see why do i mention this because when i read that scripture that i read in corinthians it talks about this idea and it says for the common good and do you know what i noticed it doesn't say in the church this is my spirit would be you know there's different kinds of gifts yes i get that those gifts start and you know this is the church is a safe place to learn and and grow and and all of these things but i hear god saying i want my followers to be equipped by the spirit of god for the common good of all not not just 510 mohawk road people's church that meets on sunday of all that we would be a blessing in our world you know there's gonna be lots of times we're not gonna get thanked for that that's okay that's totally okay you know what there's gonna be times that you know what we'll we'll be persecuted for that even that's okay but what I hear God saying I'm gonna put my spirit on you and my gifts are gonna function and operate through you and it is gonna be for the common good of all it is gonna profit all you know what I mean you're gonna be a blessing to the people that you work with you're gonna be a blessing to your boss stop criticizing start loving them you know what I mean seriously just stop with that I get it they're not perfect no one is does anyone realize that yet none of us are perfect we all got weaknesses we all got broken areas we all, like we got to stop being judgmental and we got to start working by the Spirit of God in our everyday life in the church life all of these things but we need to be filled with the Spirit of God to do these things to be strong okay to be you know why because even when you hear all the language when you hear it all when you hear about Jesus it was about going he has sent me we are sent ones we're not stay ones we're sent ones and we need to do that by the Spirit of God so this is why it's so important to talk about this okay because when we look and we just go how do we do this how do we be that light in the world how do we be that love in the world how do how do we be creative how do we do all of these things God I just feel like God's upstairs going that's why I sent the Holy Spirit like I've been trying to tell you for 2,000 years this is what I you know I never sent you alone I've said that because like, everything about the Holy Spirit's creative it's seriously he will give us the most creative ways to serve you know people around us he will give us the most creative ideas the best visions the most beautiful things you know he will operate through us that way we just you know, I'm gonna move out of being comfortable and I'm just gonna say God just by your spirit fill me speak to me you know change how I see these things help me to realize that if I neglect that I'm actually I'm doing something that's not for the common good that I'm doing something that's not you know going to mutually encourage those around me that if, if I neglect what you're speaking to me if I you know push if I quench if I shove these things down I'm doing the opposite I'm serving no one except myself you know if I do the opposite of what God's saying he's saying no this is how I want you to function by my spirit you're gonna serve people you're gonna be strong you're going to encourage those that are around you. And the gifts I'm going to put upon you are going to, you know, they are going to, be, like, you know what? There's crises that are in, we need, you know, poverty is a huge thing in our city. Like, can God not help us how to deal with poverty in our city? Can God not raise up some people that can deal with that in our city? You know, we, we, there's predicaments that are around us. We're like, whoa, whoa, we, it's like, we serve the living God. The one that created it all and we're like maybe he can help us figure it out right you know I, I'm not jesting I'm telling us the truth that we need like he wants to function and operate in us so if you're here you know what I just want us just to just say and just receive this so you know what if you're with me on this why don't we just stand to our feet 
And then, you know what? If we can just do something, can you just put your hands in a receiving position? Just... And can you just... just can you just say to Holy Spirit, just say, Holy Spirit, I welcome you here. Speak that over yourself. Say, Holy Spirit, I welcome you. My heart is wide open. And just say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill me. Fill me with your Spirit. In Scripture, it says that we're going to be baptized by the Spirit of God. You know that John baptized with water, but one's coming. You're going to be baptized by the Holy Spirit and fire. The imagery is there. It's just that, that you're going to be immersed. <laughs> you're going to be covered by the Spirit of God. And so, Lord, I pray in this room over each one of us. Lord, as we just open up ourselves, we just, God, today, even right now, we would be immersed. That we would be covered by the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, just hide us in you. Cover us in you. God, let us be immersed in you. And God, push everything else out. God, whatever's distracting us, whatever's discouraging us, whatever's tearing us down, God, I just pray by your Spirit, you just push that out. We push it out. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. And I just say, Holy Spirit, make us strong. Oh, just say that over yourself. Just say, Holy Spirit, make me strong. Oh, just say that like a prayer. Come on. Lord, make me strong. By your spirit. Oh God. That there would just be a powerful outpouring. God that we would feel the strength of your spirit. Upon us. Leading us. Guiding us. Filling us. Oh I pray that over us today. I pray that over us today. Fill us freshly. I'm not going to say anything for a minute, okay? I just want you to talk to the Holy Spirit for yourself. Tell Him, invite Him, speak to Him. Even tell Him what you're longing for, what you're desiring. Let's just do that. Let's just do that right now. Just... Welcome you, Spirit of God. Oh, can we just begin to worship God in this place? Oh, we exalt your name. Oh, we exalt your name. Oh, we're seeking after you. We're longing for you. Oh, Lord. Oh, Spirit of God. Like a rushing mighty wind, oh God, your presence. God, come upon us suddenly, I pray. Come upon us suddenly, I pray. And to be overcome by your presence, Lord and Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Yes, come flood and fill the air and your glory is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord and Holy Spirit you yes you are welcome here Oh, we long for you. 
Oh, we need you in your glory. That one more time, and Holy Spirit, you are well. Oh, you're welcome in our lives. Oh, send fill the atmosphere and your glory. pray that this is just the beginning because this is going to be played out and proved out in our daily life it's not going to be just proven here in this moment it's going to be played out it's going to be walked out lived out this week and these days that are going to follow and these months that are going to come next and so God I pray that tomorrow morning we're going to get up And God, I pray that you would remind us by your spirit, just say, Holy Spirit, I welcome you. Holy Spirit, lead and guide me. Holy Spirit, direct me. God, show me which way to go. And God, I pray that you would fill us. And God, we we fan into flame. So God, help us to know how to do that. That's going to look different. Some of us are going to need solitude. Some of us are going to need to turn on some worship music. Some of us are going to need to listen to a podcast or whatever. It might. Some of us are going to have to get out in nature, whatever it might be. That God, I just pray that we're going to get ourselves, that we're going to get to places that we can fan into flame. That God, we're going to hear your voice speaking to us. We're going to hear revelation. We're going to hear words of life. And it's going to just bring hope to us. And God, it's going to be something we're going to be able to give away. And so God, as we're going to leave here, I pray that this is just, we're just starting to fan into flame. It's being stirred up in us right now. And so God, if some of us have sort of just been sort of dormant with some stuff, I just pray this is going to be, this is going to be a radical change. And God, we're anticipating miraculous things ahead and so God I thank you for what you're doing here today what you're speaking to every life I thank you God and God we just seal it in the name of Jesus and everybody said amen and amen and amen can we just thank the Lord amen amen and amen I hope you enjoyed today's video We would love to hear your story and what God is doing in your life. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email us, info at thepc.ca. We have something for everyone and everyone is welcome. Visit our website, thepc.ca, or like us on Facebook. Have a good day.